Juve, the most remote island in the world, extreme travel. Hey, I'm Charles Vili. I'm from San Francisco, California. And well, I've been to every UN country, 193. I was the youngest person to go to every traveler century club destination in the world. I like going to crazy places. Great to finally meet one of the world's biggest travelers. And this is why Charles travels to discover new things and to learn. We're here in Yerevan, Armenia right now. We just had the extraordinary travel festival conference where we had a lot of really traveled people. Super fun. Charles Vili, considered by many as America's most traveled man. And he likes to go to extreme places. Uh, there's a, like a rock that sticks out of the North Atlantic Ocean. It's 400 miles away from anything. It's called Rock All. Only a handful of people have ever landed on it because it sticks straight up and it's covered with bird shit. The sea goes up and down, five meters of swell, so you can't really get very close to it easily. They tried going there two times to land on it. The second time, and they figured out you could try and swim, like grab onto this kelp that was stuck to the rock and climb and grab a little ledge to climb up and hang on from there. I pulled myself up and I stood up and I put my hands in the air. Everyone's cheering. I like made sure to put my hands in the air and I'm standing there. Yeah. But because I'm not hanging on, the next wave came and knocked me off the rock. Did they get the picture though? Yeah, they got the picture. Uh, There's a couple times where people have mentioned me as father or the grandfather of extreme travel or systematic travel. And whenever that happens, I feel like, you know, some of the hardships and all the time and everything that that is worth it. I mean, that's a very, it makes me proud. Go, first of all, do it your own way, and then bring back your own memories. Did you have anyone that you idolized as a traveler, as a young man, or anyone you look up to? Well, like this is gonna sound kind of stupid, but one of the reasons that I started to go even to live abroad was to learn languages, European languages, because I wanted to be like James Bond. I just wanted to walk into any restaurant, cafe, or any situation and be able to say the right thing. I thought then I would be complete. And little did I know that uh, how much of <laughs> else of the world there was out there. Who do you think is the biggest traveler in the world today, uh, or, or ever? Is it you? Uh, it's not me, but you know we had this conference just now, and we had a lot of really, really extraordinary people like people that have walked for thousands of kilometers up mountains and people that have, you know, like I've been to some more crazy places and people that went to all 193 two times or three times. You know, people have their own interests and their own way to go about it. So you can't really compare apples and oranges. There's different types of extreme and uh, we try to have a big tent. We like all the extremes. As long as you have the passion, you know, you're a friendly person and we can share the stories, then hey, you're, you're a big traveler. But I, I used to be a lot more hung up on this when I was younger. It was important to try and chase records and have these kind of uh, goals. But you can't really judge. There's no right or wrong way to travel. You know, there are people that have been on a bicycle for 50 years and driving around for, you know, 50 years or more. Never been home, never had a home. There's just a lot of ways to measure things. And it's really about yourself, what you enjoy. You know, are you challenging yourself to do a little bit more every day? So Charles, where did your travel box stop? Uh, you know, when I was a kid, our family didn't have much money at all. So they never traveled. My family really didn't travel. And in fact, the first foreign country I went to was Spain when I was 13. And I had studied like a couple of years of Spanish. And so I was leading my parents around as a, as a 13 year old, which was, uh, you know, weird to say the least. I was fascinated with maps and globes and collecting stamps. And so there was this whole world. I was seeing patterns. Uh, and I really wanted to go out and see the reality. You know, my name is Charles, but my middle name is Adams. And so my parents took the CH and AD and they made the name Chad for me. Okay. And so I always thought that I had my own country in the middle of Africa. <laughs> and when I was right in the heart of Africa. Yeah, I thought uh. so. And I thought it must be some amazing place like, uh, you know, Wakanda in Black Panther. It's my like treasure kingdom. Uh, it turns out it's not really like that. But yeah. uh, that, that's another reason I was stimulated. With all these expensive destinations and stuff, how have you funded it? Yeah, so that's really changed over the years because when I first started, I had helped a software company to go public way back 1998. And so 
I really had uh, the means to go and go as much as I want, as fast as I want, as slow as I want, and then started having kids, you know. I wanted to do these things before I have kids. I had three kids. They're now 18, 17, and 14. Did you finish the countries before you had kids? I, I, I did, yeah. Okay. When I went to Bouvet Island, the most remote one, my oldest was only one month old. So as soon as I said I'm stopped, Bouvet came up and I went for three months. So, And how, how was that, the relationship? It came up kind of suddenly. Uh, it's a long story, but it came up kind of suddenly and I had to sort of roll over and uh, talk to my wife at the time. But this was going to break the Guinness world record so she had been kind of lived with it uh, lived with me through it and she said you know you have to do it so on that one it got good support and what was the guinness world record yeah so guinness world record actually doesn't exist anymore and it hadn't existed since uh, 2000 so that was kind of actually a shit show if you will because it had existed in 2000 and i was going after that and then when i passed it was 2003 2004 the guinness people actually said they would accept it if someone else would judge it so it kind of came down to there's no one else that could actually Actually physically judge it and that's the reason that I started MTP most traveled people to get an actual database of people and places put it online so we could have a you know a more fact-based discussion about this kind of thing you have a least favorite country yeah uh, well I mean it's pretty easy to say Nigeria a lot of people say Nigeria but the fact of the matter is the last time I was in Nigeria was more than 10 years ago I, if you don't like it I haven't been back uh, so I can't really say right now you know, there's kind of a fourth dimension of all of this, which is a time. Uh, like, I was in Yerevan last time, 20 years ago, and it's so different now. This is the most cliche question. We all hate it, but do you have a favorite country? You mean besides Denmark? <laughs> I really, actually, I really love uh, Denmark. You know, I love New Zealand. I love a lot of different countries, but real travelers can't answer that question because there's so many subjective conditions of when you visit a place and every place has its own beauty. So, I mean, I don't want to sound like a jerk, but there is no real answer. I went to the Guinness uh, office in London, the headquarters. I didn't know what to expect. I was like wondering, who am I going to see in the waiting area? Yeah. Am I going to see like some guy juggling chainsaws? Am I going to trip on someone's mustache that's 20 feet long? Uh, you know, who's going to be there? And it turned out it was completely empty. It was like Wizard of Oz. No one is there. The guy that was running the entire travel and transport section was a part-time law student from France, a 24-year-old guy. You know, I think that they're doing more now, but I don't have a whole lot of respect for Guinness because, for example, some people that are trying to set world records now uh, for fastest or youngest or whatever, they say that if you visit the DMZ between South Korea and North Korea, you visited North Korea, which is not right at all. You need to get a visa, go inside North Korea, and be toured I mean, around. If you go in a room in a country. So you can't go in a room and walk around. around, and so yeah. uh, it's just that's not that's not legitimate. Uh, they also say that if you go to the Golan Heights in Israel, uh, we, just, it's, you know, we can argue if it's Israel or not. But it's not but Syria. But it's not Syria. It's not at all. I mean. For an American can't even get a visa, no one can go to Syria at this time. And it's too bad for Guinness, you know, because they should be better than that. Fly back and then I got mugged in Buenos Aires. Some guy jumped on me, stole my watch and then and then ran away on a scooter with his with his buddy. I remember once in Costa Rica in this place Tortuguero and they uh, you know it's a jungle and so they have these little tree frogs with the red uh, with the red feet and I thought I'm looking in the eyes of this tree frog. I really think I'm communicating with him, like, you know, having a bond with animals. And I'm staring, staring, and then he hops up right on my forehead and pisses down my face. <laughs> Yeah. Once I drove around every 76 provinces of Thailand, all 234 provinces of Slovenia, just to just for fun, because if you if you're gonna go, you should go to every place. Have you been to all provinces of Denmark? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we can do a road trip there. I want to. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, about travel, I mean, you go first of all. You know, people out there, you think you're gonna see something super different super exotic but even the most remote tribes they just like you and me they care about the same things they care about what when's their next meal coming from uh, they care about their family they care about safety it's it's all the same yeah. that's the joy is finding that common humanity even in a really really different environment so go uh, try and find that um, do it your own way and then bring back your own memories